Praise the Lord. Habakkuk. If you have a KJV Bible in your hand, turn with it, me to the book of Habakkuk. Some of the children are thinking Habakkuk. Now that's not a book of the Bible. Some of them are thinking, I've never heard a sermon preached out of the book of Habakkuk. Well, I'll tell you this. I had some other directions I wanted to go in, but the Lord directed my attention to a verse in the book of Habakkuk about 45 minutes before church started. So if I've ever threw the shotgun up at the hip, that's what I'm doing tonight. I'm very concerned, so y'all pray for me. We've got the name of a book in the Bible that's hard to pronounce. We've got a book in the Bible that nobody wants to preach out of. We've got unfamiliar texts, which y'all have noticed. I try to preach the unfamiliar text. Y'all noticed that. We've heard this other stuff for years, and we've heard them preach it till it's threadbare, and we start revival thinking we're going to have a mighty revival. We walk out of the revival and say, what happened? Because we're preaching from the same text. We're trying to get water out of the same towel we've been wringing out. And uh, there's got to be something happening. <clears throat> So that's not a book of the Bible that we hear very many sermons come out of. I would say most of you have heard very few sermons that come out of the book of the Bible called Habakkuk. And I want us to look together in the third chapter. And may I direct your attention to verse number 19. Brother Nathaniel, if you would turn to Psalm chapter number 61, you'll be reading verse number 2. Brother Jesse, Isaiah 35 and 6. And I want to say thank you for being present in the house of the Lord. I feel like it's very important that we be in the house of the Lord. So Habakkuk chapter number three, verse number 19. Brother Nathaniel, would you stand and read Psalm 61 and two? From the end of the earth will I cry unto thee. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. The rock that is higher than I. Brother Jesse, Isaiah 35 and six. Then shall the lame man leap as in heart, and the tongues of the dumb sing. For in the wilderness shall waters break out, and streams in the desert. Praise the Lord. All right, church, could we stand for the reading of the text, Habakkuk 3 and 19. The Bible says, The Lord God is my strength, and he will make my feet like hinds feet, and he will make me to walk upon my high places to the chief singer on my stringed instruments. And notice, that's the last verse of that book. May we pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We praise you for the privilege to be in the house of the Lord. We thank you, God, that each one has gathered together in your name. I pray, Lord, that you would anoint this servant of the Lord and that you would help me to say only the things that you would have me to say, nothing more or less than a watch at my mouth, dear, dear God. I pray that you would anoint the ears of this thy people that they might hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. And may we not depart this place sorrowfully, but rather joyfully. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, I said it a little while ago. If you have a KJV Bible in your hand, turn with me to the book of Habakkuk. I talked about how many of us have never heard a sermon preached from out of this book. No preacher that you know of has taken a text from out of this book of the Bible. But what an encouraging scripture that is, that very last statement that Habakkuk makes to the children of Israel. And I talked to us a little bit about how our children might not even know that that's a book in the Bible because that's just kind of back there towards the end of the Old Testament where them books get really thin. And, and this book called Habakkuk is only three chapters long. I'm sure you noticed that. And if, if you're still searching for that book in the Bible, stop and just listen to me preach because I'll tell you something, you can find it, but you got to go past Jeremiah and Isaiah, you keep on turning. And if you come to Zephaniah, you've gone too far. you got to back up and squeezed in there just before Zephaniah, 
there is a book of the Bible called Habakkuk, and it's considered to be a minor prophet that wrote this book. And, and, and then because of the brevity of this prophetical writing, I would agree with this. I would say that's confirmation enough that Habakkuk wasn't one of those people that was talking just to be heard or somebody that was popping up and testifying just to be seen or somebody that wasn't advertising that they've been preaching in the camp meetings or preaching in the streets or preaching in the local assembly. It just seemed like this man would say only the things that the Lord would have him to say, nothing more or less. But then you've got Jeremiah, and he's over there saying that's all short and sweet and that's good, Habakkuk, but the word of God is like a fire in my bosom and I'm trying to hold back and be a man of few words, but I've got a lot to say and because of the length of the books of the Bible that Jeremiah wrote, he's known as a major prophet. But as you begin to think about this book of Habakkuk, and if you read this book, as I did in just a few minutes, you can read the entire writing here, uh, you'll notice that this was a man that really was concerned about the people of Israel, the people of Judah, and he seems to have no problem whatsoever taking responsibility for this writing. I noticed that his name appeared twice in this writing. And Habakkuk's name means the embracer. The imagery is that of another taking hold of someone and embracing them. The imagery is that of a husband embracing a wife that is hurting that's in pain or that's suffering. If I could take it to the ultimate imagery in my mind, it was at the death of Jephthah, our grandson, the son of Brother Nathaniel and Sister Rachel, when it came time to comfort them and, and to watch them comfort one another and, and all the embracing that was involved and that took place and, and us walking out of the back rooms of the hospital and out of the back rooms of the neonatal intensive care unit going out into the family room and you look out see everybody else embracing and they're smiling and they're slapping one another on the back and saying he looks just like dad or she looks just like mom and they're bumping fists and shaking hands and, and even embracing and there's joy in that but that's not the kind of embracing that we're talking about here. Habakkuk is embracing this nation of Israel because he understands the significance of their pain and, and the predicament they're in, the problems that are forthcoming, and, and he's just one of those that's trying to help somebody. It's similar to the embracing of the Howell boys and their sister Hannah as they got in a huddle and they consoled one another and comfort one another at the death of Jephthah. Now, if you've never been in a situation like that, it is a difficult situation situation to be in as you watch one person go from one to another and then another person take their turn going from one to another and you watch eight people do that they're trying to comfort people by embracing one another brother samuel would you come up here brother samuel walk on up here he's got a brother here tonight named philip Brother Philip, come on up here and stand not too far from Brother Samuel. Now, embracing is more than just shaking a hand real quick and slapping somebody on the shoulder. You see, that's greeting somebody with a holy kiss. And, and I feel like unless you're blood kin or husband and wife, uh, you really probably don't want to embrace in the manner that Habakkuk's name means. So, but I'll show you what really embracing is. Em embracing in this definition is Brother Samuel giving Brother Philip a bear hug and squeezing Brother Philip until he knows that I'm with you, I'm a part of you, and I feel you, and I get you. Did y'all see that? And so what about this? What about these events that bring forth this kind of embracing? What does it take to get us to that point where we are we're willing to crucify pride and we're willing to humble ourselves to have brotherly love to this capacity or this level to express it in such magnitude. Sometimes it takes suffering and calamity
worry and troubles and trials for us to forget about our feelings and think about somebody else. Oh, God's helping me. But, but you know, Habakkuk, when you begin to read the book of Habakkuk, you can tell that Habakkuk seems to be thinking of him myself. I can't even use notes hardly tonight because I don't have any. And uh, Habakkuk seems to have a problem with the occupants of Judah or the civilians that he rubs shoulders with uh, every day. His own people, his family, and his friends because uh, of their idolatrous ways, their pagan practices. And we find that he's praying in his prayer closet about these people's horrible spiritual decadence. He's praying about their decay morally. He's praying about all this that's going on and it seems like he poses the question to God, why is this being permitted? Why does not somebody do something about this? Seems like Habakkuk is saying, could somebody please do something about all the debauchery, all the decadent, all this filthy stuff that is going on? Could somebody do something about it? But as you watch this book go forth and, and this pro prophetical writing progress, you see that he begins to look at it from a different angle. And he looks at it as a watchman that is on the wall. And I'm not quoting the other Bible's passage. But he said in chapter number 2 I will stand upon my watch And set me upon the tower And will watch to see What he will say unto me And what I shall answer When I am reproved So God begins to deal with the heart Of Habakkuk And begin to try his motives now I want you to know here tonight that there's some of us uh, we wouldn't embrace our neighbor and, and there's some of us we wouldn't embrace God if God himself was to walk into this building <laughs> but, but I'm telling you here tonight uh, I preached this morning a sermon titled from does anybody remember desolation the restoration and this is exactly what God wants to back to understand these people are going to go through a time or a period of desolation and it seems like Habakkuk begins to understand this and now he's all of a sudden burdened and he's concerned about his people and what they're going to go through so Habakkuk at first he's just saying God wear them out God do something about this and God begins to change the mindset of this prophet as he gets under the influence of the spirit and gets a burden that comes from the father and now he's trying to comfort people and is rooting for restoration. You see, Habakkuk is a praying man. As you read this book of the Bible, you find out this man is a praying man. Now, I'm preaching tonight on destined for higher ground. Those of you that remember the context that Brother Nathaniel and Brother Jesse read, you will remember the promises of higher ground. Point number one, I would like to us for us to think of the deer. How many of you know the Bible calls the deer a hind? In another place he said he will make my feet like hinds feet. And also there in chapter number 3 and verse number 19 of the book of Habakkuk, he said the Lord God is my strength and he will make my feet like hinds feet and make me to walk upon my high places. I'm preaching tonight on destined for higher ground. How many of you know that the 7 billion people in this world were born to worship God in spirit and in truth and they are destined for higher ground. But unfortunately there's a lot of people that forget their destiny and they forget why they were designed for that destiny and they forget about that heavenly calling that has come upon every one of us. Now I quickly looked up the deer in an encyclopedia and I wanted to know a little more about this deer. Now the Native American deer has been observed by the United States Agriculture Society and they said that there are times that this deer can jump as high as 12 feet and it has been recorded that they have achieved a height of 15 feet in a 
emergencies. The only reason why they're able to achieve that level of highness, if you were, is because they were designed. And because they were designed and destined to escape their enemies narrowly, they are a deer. God made them with that ability. You look at their legs, there's not a whole lot there to glory in. You wonder how could that much strength come out of them little old legs. But it's kind of like Jack be nimble and Jack be quick and Jack jumped over the candlestick. There's been times I've seen him with that deer in the head lights look and brother Jesse I wondered why in the world do they have that look it seems like they recognize their inability to escape the imminent danger and the doom that's ahead just like this man Habakkuk realized after he wished the worst upon the nation of Israel God begins to speak to him and God begins to tell him big boy you prayed and you're right, you're feeling it. Judgment is coming. There's something looming on the horizon. And Habakkuk begins to preach doom and gloom. And he realizes because God tells him, Brother Jesse, that Babylon's coming. The armies of Babylon are coming just like that vehicle. It approaches that deer. Listen, America ought to have a deer in the headlight look. We ought to recognize that we were destined for higher ground and that there are higher paths for our feet. I don't understand why we take the low road. I don't understand why we take the more low road. I don't understand why America stooped as low as she has, but we need to remember this, that we're destined for higher ground. We've been designed for higher places. I feel our preacher in this house you see that deer just before he is struck there is a mechanism in him that trips I like to call it the rapture suddenly he's able brother Aaron by street that should not be present suddenly he's able to unleash the strength of the power that does not seem to be there the Bible said Habakkuk said the Lord God he is my strength and he will make my feet like high speed. Woo! Woo! Hallelujah. The enemy almost had me. I was almost gone. Pastor, I almost backslid. I almost stumbled and fell. But somehow I regained balance. Somehow got a strength from a heavenly place. Somehow there's a mechanism in me that activated and I was able to be stable. And I was able to regain footing. Listen, I can tell us even in perilous times and slippery slope of places, we can trust that God can give us the highest feet that we need. We can because God is able. He's enabled and equipped every one of his children to do things that are impossibilities because by God all things are possible. I'm preaching to us here tonight. You're destined for higher ground. God's got higher places than where you are at. Why choose the low road to Solomon and Gomorrah? Why choose the low road to Jericho? Why choose the low road to Shechem? Why? Uh, why? Why choose the low road? Why have friends in low places? Why? Why? Why have friends in low places? Why choose them foreign spirits, them unfamiliar spirits? Why use whiskey, wine, and alcohol to help you cope in low places? Why not be lifted up into heavenly places in Christ Jesus? You see, you look at this deer and he's been designed this way. He looks a little bit abnormal, Brother Jeremiah. I mean, he just looks like a hot dog walking around on 
toothpicks. The other night we went home from church, Brother EJ, you like this. And there was this beautiful deer, and he was growing horns, and I believe he had velvet on them horns already. And I just happened to look to the side, and there he was, standing at the fence, deciding should I cross the road. A question for you. Why did the deer cross the road? Because Brother Howe was gardens on the other side. Amen. And uh, he's a debate on where to go, Brother Harrison. Should I go for it or should I not? But when that big suburban come rolling by, he said it's too much for me to handle. But not really. The U United States Department of Agriculture is trying to say he can jump 12 to 15 feet. I've already said that. But listen, Brother Nathaniel, something within him does not let him know that he has that ability until he needs it. Come on, I'm talking about something that's greater than adrenaline. I'm talking about a present help in a time of trouble. As saints of God, the devil will tell us he's that big suburban coming to maul us over and he's going to make mixed meat out of us. But I'm going to tell us here tonight that the Spirit of God begins to quicken us. And I said it's greater than adrenaline. It's the power of the Holy Ghost of heaven. I'm telling us here tonight, God's going to strengthen you and God's going to help you. If family trouble's all you got, God can help get you over family trouble. If financial trouble's all you got, God can help you overcome financial trouble. Are right, y'all listening to Pastor right here? Hey, tonight I'm looking in this notebook desperately trying to find something, and there's nothing there. But you see, Habakkuk begins to realize, Brother Nathaniel, that he is in trouble because his nation's in trouble. Now suddenly, all of a sudden, brother, he realizes, oh no, if the righteous hey, suffer judgment and the unrighteous suffer judgment together. Where's the scripture for that, Brother How? It rains on the just and the unjust. And he realizes these are my people and by God's grace, I'm going to have to narrowly escape uh, this judgment that's coming. And listen, I don't believe God's children receive judgment upon themselves personally uh, because God is a just God. But Habakkuk, Habakkuk had just been praying uh, and saying, God, do justice. Uh, when will justice be served? Uh, and how many of you know some of the things that are coming upon this nation? We might get a little residue on us uh, and we might get a little mud on us uh, as God reigns down the fiery judgments upon this country, but there can be something in us if we're a blood bought child of God, if we refuse to succumb to the spirit of fear, and we rise up with faith, we can believe that there's going to be a mechanism in us that triggers and that lifts us and raptures us up above the problems. Come on now, church. I'm telling you here tonight, God is going to help his people. Almost done. The thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But whenever that deer, Brother Jeremiah, realized that that suburban's fixing to make him tomorrow's roast, something tripped in him. And he just turned and kind of ever so nimbly just jumped the fence. And I said, well, big boy, just do that so gracefully, why don't you? And escape the danger that is so close and escape my dinner platter. Now, are y'all listening? And God's going to help the church. We get so discouraged and disheveled and sometimes find ourselves in disarray because of everything that's going on. But I do believe that God is not only going to rapture our bodies before them horrible judgments rain down out of glory, but I also believe the last day church is going to have enraptured or elevated hearts and spirits. I want to live on higher ground. I'm preaching right here tonight. Young people, quit running your minds through the quagmire. Quit running your minds through that miry clay. You need 
need God to lift you up and out uh, of a horrible pit. Uh, if God will do it, uh, then let him do it. Uh, God's telling you he'll get you out. Uh, God's telling you there is a way out. Uh, God's telling you he can lift you up uh, above sorrows, uh, problems, despair, anxiety, depression. God can get you out. I'm almost done. That's what we like. Right? The man's just to preach 20 minutes. Right? That's what we like. Uh, well, I'm preaching evangelistically here tonight. Like an evangelist. What will it take to get you to rely on the Lord? What will it take to get you to trust the Lord? What will it take to get you to where you just say, hands up, Lord? That's what Habakkuk's doing. He said, I've asked some questions. I've even questioned your judgment now. I wish for it, but now I'm wondering, is it too much? I'm wanting to walk around and embrace everybody and say it's going to be all right. And now Habakkuk's praying and he's prophesying and he's praying in the spirit. What he keeps coming up with is bigger than judgment and greater than judgment. He hears rejoicing in the background. Mercy is rejoicing against judgment. He realizes that deer is equipped with hope. He realizes that the people of God are equipped with hope. You see, this is a common animal. This is something Israelis are familiar with seeing. This is why a lot of the Bible writers wrote about the deer or the hind or the heart. Hey, come on now, David said, as a heart panic after the water brook, so my soul panicked after the oh God. Why is that deer pining away for water? It's because of how hard he's been running. Because of how high he's been climbing. I'm telling you church, as long as you're running, God will give you strength. As long as you're climbing, God will give you strength. You've got to trust the Lord. You've got to depend on God and God's going to get the church out of this mess. I said God is going to get the church out of this mess. Amen. The devil's wanting to destroy the earth and its occupants. But it's going to be God that lets the earth be melted by the fervent heat of the sun. Do y'all know we've got a sister planet? This ain't science class, but I learned this in school. We've got a sister planet named Venus. And do y'all know only because we've got some special things around Earth that keeps us from burning up just like our sister planet Venus. If we were just a little bit closer, meaning the planet Earth, or if we were just a little bit further, we would be burning up or we would be freezing. Are y'all listening to me? Every little microorganism that's in the sea has something to do with us being spared. It goes from one real tiny, minuscule microorganism to one that's a little bit bigger, and then to one that's a little bit bigger, and then to a crustacean, and to a barnacle, and then a fish eats that. Uh, Y'all know the life cycle. Then it gets up to the big blue whale that's uh, absorbing all the carbon and the oxide. Hey, hey, I've been preaching now for about 25 minutes, and I'm about done. But, but God is con in control. And and God is the one that's keeping us from being consumed. It's God that is keeping our country. It's God that's keeping the world intact. We ain't got to worry about global warming as long as there's a God telling the sun to stay in place in that galaxy. And as long as God is telling Earth to revolve on its axis in orbit, we've got a God that is in control in the same eyes of that heavenly power. Father is the same eyes that's upon you. And I'm telling you here tonight, as I'm trying to preach to you, the deer was a common animal to the Israelis. And oftentimes they referred to the nimble, uh, the nimble ways of that deer and their ability to escape harm and danger in church. There is no harm that can come to you that God does not permit. I'm telling you here tonight, the thief might come for to steal and to kill and destroy but there is a watchman in heaven and he's aware of every thief, every tactic of that thief and our God is going to protect us 
He's going to keep us. I'm telling you, he'll make you as nimble as the deer. And in the time that it's needed the most, that mechanism will trigger. And you will be raptured out of the heart's way. Because you're destined for higher ground. You think with me of what God was trying to do when he told them disciples, you go to the upper room. What it was saying is, I'm going to take you to a higher level. There's going to be higher ground from the norm of society. We're going to take you to a step up above Judaism. We're going to take you to a notch above Christianity. And young people in this day and hour that you're living in, when there's trials and calamity and perplexity on every hand, if you just go to the upper room, when them things come your way and you think for sure you're not designed, you're not nimble enough, you're not agile enough, hey, I can't glory in the strength of my legs. It's like the old deer hot dog on sticks. Hey, I ain't got no strength, but it's there, Brother Caleb. I'm going to say it one more time. The United States Department of Agriculture culture said they can jump 12 to 15 feet high but you know what they don't seem to know that brother Jeremiah until it's an emergency until there's a crisis and suddenly there's a gift or an ability present to help them meet the certain situation and church I'm telling you when the Holy Ghost rises up in the house of God there is a mechanism triggered among the people of God that have been in the high ground and we know Life is sweet in higher places. Why should I have friends in low places when I've got friends in heavenly places? It's like I just saw with my mind's eye a deer above the predators, a deer in high places chewing its cud and just looking down at that tiger, looking down at that lion, looking down at whatever's coming against you, financial trouble, burdens, uh, you know, listen to right here, whatever has come to destroy you, Habakkuk seems to understand now that no matter what kind of judgment is coming, we can hope that as long as we have repented and we're serving God, that there is going to be a time when the presence of God strengthens us. He goes on to say, Amen, Lord, you've given me feet like hinds feet, and he's going to make me walk upon the high places. The last statement or the last sentence in that book is to the chief singer on my stringed instruments. I I don't know much about Habakkuk. God put this on my heart 45 minutes before church, but it's a no-brainer that it must have liked music and it must have liked singing. And how many of you know you can sing a song in difficult places, even when you're in a low place in a trying time? You can sing the Lord's song if you're in the prison, in the innermost part of the prison. You can sing because you might be in a low place. But there is a high place. I said we're destined for higher ground. Let's stand here tonight. You know, oftentimes in the sacred writ, they talk about the pagans and the heathens going to high places. And in them high places, Brother Wood, they would worship their idols. They could not speak, could not hear. Hey, they just did not have an ability to help their subjects. But there was peace and comfort in knowing that they were elevated in a higher place. And that meant their religion was superior to somebody else's religion. How do you know this? Because the prophets of Baal, they wanted to meet with the prophet of God in a high place. Listen, I don't care how big their temples of worship become. I don't care how popular they become and what they embrace and what they accept. I'd rather be one of the chosen few that can be raptured in spirit or raptured in body at a moment's notice and know that that strength coming from 
God in a moment. Paul Jeremiah, I can be rejuvenated. In a moment, I can be quickened. In a moment, I can be changed. Church, I'm telling you, this world is not my home. Somebody said, how low can America go? It can go a hot, whole lot lower than she's went. What about the children of Moloch casting their children to the gods of fire? America can go a whole lot lower. But if she does go a whole lot lower, you know what? I'm going higher. I got on that big elevator this past weekend. It said going down. I looked at Sister House and said, bless God, this holiness preacher ain't going down. I'm going up. I'm telling you, church, we ain't going down. We're going up. That deer thought for sure he was mince meat going down to that suburban's grill. Until what God equipped him with triggered. And right now there's some of y'all, something's going off inside. And I'm telling you, go ahead and let the Holy Ghost have his way. I'm done preaching. If you're waiting on me to preach something else, it just ain't there. You see, the deer is equipped to not only find himself in high places, but to walk around in high places. Preacher, is it possible for me to follow? Yes. How is Jonathan and Saul falling from their high place? But as long as you're careful to put your feet where Jesus put his, your feet are equipped. The deer's feet are equipped to walk in high places. Listen, church, I can tell you we're a lot better off walking in what seems to be dangerous territory with God than to be tripping over ourselves in this world. This world is not my home. I don't trust this world. I don't trust the people of this world. I want to be in heavenly places. Church, I want to be designed to live on higher ground. Somebody wants to be blessed, run up here on this platform and run behind pastor. I'm telling you, you want to be blessed, run up here on higher ground. You want to run? Come on, church, I feel the Holy Ghost. Men and women, anybody else? Higher ground. Lord, set my feet on higher ground. Set my feet on higher ground. Set my feet on higher ground. And when they had gathered in the upper room, why not the lower room? Why not the basement? Why not the low place? Listen, the devil's got the low places, but God's got the high places. You go to the upper room. You don't go to the pub in the basement. You don't go to the liquor store in the basement. You go up to the upper room. Church, I'm telling you right here, right now we're on higher ground. Sister Wooten that we could get to? Was there not a city of refuge on the hill? Was there not Jerusalem, a city on the hill? Was there not a place that this group of people could get to where we could find refuge from COVID? I'm telling you right now, somebody better shoot for the stars. I said, somebody better shoot for the stars. You better quit shooting for low things. Aim for the stars. I feel the Holy Ghost in this house.
Let's worship the Lord. What about a baby born premature? Sister Rachel said, God did the impossible, something nobody's ever heard of, Sister Hammond. Higher places, higher ground, higher than a school of medicine, higher than Dr. Fauci, higher than a school of medicine, higher than a school of medicine, higher than a law practice, oh, higher than a politician, higher than Capitol's Hill. I said higher than Capitol's Hill. I'm talking about Zion's Hill. Somebody ought to praise him. Somebody ought to worship him. I cannot talk him, but I can talk to him. Let him lift you up. 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 church heaven's not so far away it's gonna be our home someday to ever live on what higher ground to ever live on higher ground why don't somebody raise your hand and worship and praise the lord ever living on higher ground Sister Teresa Wallace, where's she at? She back there? Get right there, Sister Teresa. You sisters, get where you can put your hand on her. I just heard the Lord say, you got sick and tired of living in the lowlands, didn't you? Are you fixing to find out what it's like to live in the highlands, amen? Would y'all stretch your hand right here this way? Egyptians. 
But now we're living in Canaan land. And on that big hill over there is the city of David, the city called Jerusalem, the city of the great king. We ain't making bricks for the devil in the mud tonight. We ain't gathering straw for the devil tonight. Come on, church, I'm telling you, here tonight, uh, the devil ain't picking on us because that mechanism is triggered that helps us escape uh, the walls of the devil. This is going to take a concerted effort right here. But I need some of you brothers to be careful without dumping all the contents of this pulpit. Take it and set it down there. Now that's going to be a concerted effort or it ain't going to work. That right there will tear a hernia in a heartbeat. It's going to take more than two or three. It's going to take a handful of brothers to move that big old obstacle. That ain't nothing to play with, is it, brother? Y'all see what the high ground is? Does this not look like a, a mountain? You know what high ground is? It's shouting ground. The old deer goes to the edge of the mountain, and he chooses cud. That's the imagery I got while I was preaching. He chooses cud, and he looks down there at the line and says, you what designed for this. You got them big, strong legs and big, strong paws. You're designed to crush, and you almost crush me. Banana and a boo boo. <laughs> it's true that the devil's a mighty foe, but he's a defeated foe. So, you know what high ground is? It's shouting ground. No worries, no calls for concern. The beast can't get up here because I've been designed. I shouldn't be able to get over it. But by my God, Brother Nathaniel, I've run through a troop. By my God, I hurdle the wall. Huh? My strength comes from the Lord. And you know how you have strength? By rejoicing in the Lord. I told Brother Chris Roper today, this morning, just matter-of-factly, I said, Brother... Y'all been on my heart all morning. Told Brother Sterrett, you've been on my heart. I found out why these two men have been on my heart. I told Brother Chris Roper, I said, listen, I ain't known you long. I'm telling you flatly and plainly, rejoice in the Lord this morning. He said, we shall rejoice. At the church this morning, I got about the, where Cactus Mex is at. He texted, he said, man of God, during our choir singing, I said, Brother Howell, down there in South Florida, text me just one sentence. God said, rejoice in the Lord. And he said, we got the rejoicing. And he said, the power of the Holy Ghost. He said, come in there and gave us a much needed blessing. A much needed blessing. He said, if you only knew, I can't tell. But if you only knew, then Sister Hal come in here tonight and said, I can rejoice. Sister Wooten, he almost had you. The devil almost had you with COVID. But come on up and shout and run. Amen. I'm living now on the higher ground. It, it don't, I, I'm telling you, when, when your feet have almost slipped, when the enemy almost got you, but I'm now on shouting ground. I'm on higher ground. I'm in a higher and lofty place. I said I'm in a higher and lofty place. A place where I can rejoice. A place where I can bless the name of the Lord. Rejoice, church! Rejoice, church! Rejoice, church! Rejoice, church! Rejoice, church! Hallelujah! 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 Woo! 
feet down up here on the brink of higher ground. I'm gonna take it out. I'm feeling something I've never felt before at Bethel right now. You keep that up, you're on the brink of something greater than you've ever witnessed in your lifetime. Come on, church. Whatever you're doing right now, keep it up. Put your mind on the Lord. Oh, rejoice with me. Not the power of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank God. He delivered us from the prayer. He delivered us from the nurse of pestilence. He delivered us from the virus. He delivered us from the dreaded disease. He delivered us. I said he delivered us. I said he delivered us. Sister Tammy. Where's Brother Aaron and Sister Tammy? That old palsy predator. Right here. That old palsy predator almost had given. Almost had Christian. Hey, but all of a sudden, we felt an oxygen to move to South Florida. We felt an oxygen to get a higher ground. Somewhere the Spirit of God enabled us and equipped us and it proved vacuumed us in a high lofty place I'm telling you church I feel the sound in this house I feel the sound in this house there's nothing like the Lord when he gets all over me when he begins to quicken me when he begins to empower me church he's empowering us begin to sink right y'all remember the old hymn song down in the lowlands rear I didn't even think of that the whole time I was preaching but now huh Canaan land living in Canaan land living in Canaan land was down in the lowlands rear bound and fetter strong but now I'm living on higher ground Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. What about it, Brother Jeremiah? How about getting your bride by the hand? Amen. What about higher ground? Does it pay to wait on Mr. Wright? Does it pay to wait on Mrs. Wright? Does it pay to wait on Mr. Wright? Does it pay to wait on Mrs. Wright? Down in the low and drear, there was times when I felt low. There was times when I was disappointed. There was times when I wondered where. But now God's lifted me into heavenly places. Oh, I never could believe it would be this good. I never could have believed it would be this sweet. I'm telling you, church, high ground is shout ground. High ground is shout ground. <laughs> Somebody ought to shout right now. You say I ain't got the Holy Ghost. You ain't got to have the Holy Ghost to shout. You ain't got to have the Holy Ghost to shout. Amen. You just lift up your voice. You just worship and praise him. I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm happy.
tell you, you got something to shout about when you get into high places. You got something to shout about when you get in heavenly places. Thank God. If all I've got tonight is a cough, Sister Woody, thank God. The devil was this close, the doctor told me. He said, you're this close to need medicine we use in ICU. Not in the hospital. Told you, pastor. He said, you're this close to needing medicine we use in ICU. I just happened to be going for my annual checkup. I didn't go to be checked. I didn't go to have my lungs checked, but I knew where I'd been hurting. He zeroed in on it, got to listen. He said, you're this close, not to being hospitalized, but to getting the most powerful antibiotic we can give. You're this close to being on medicine that we give intravenously in the ICU. Almost. <laughs> Sister Wooten, almost intubated. <laughs> Almost intubated. Almost intubated. Almost intubated. That night I got up there in Fire Forest and showed out. I said, some of you don't understand the seriousness of this. I said, you better get out there and pray. You better get... Your pastor was almost intubated. But I ain't intubated tonight. I'm not choking on the tube, praise God. I'm preaching the gospel. I said, I'm preaching the gospel. I said, I'm preaching the gospel. And I'm worshiping the Lord. And I'm praising God. Thank God for what He's done for the battle holding this church. Woo! 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 Sister Grace, you said you'd like to overcome immaturity, right? That's what you said, right? Immaturity. You seem like an incredibly mature person to me, but you know what you're dealing with? I don't know, see? How does it feel? Come over here. Almost suicidal. Hated life. Hated people. Life wasn't worth living. But now you stand out there by a street corner and see sinners just going to hell and you weep and you cry. People you used to hate you now love. That sounds to me like you escaped to high ground. Well, why don't you, Sister Grace, just raise your hands and worship the Lord and don't hold back and praise God. How does it feel to be living on higher ground? Sister Grace, just shake them hands and break loose. There ain't no shackles on her anymore. There ain't no feathers on her anymore. There ain't no shame in serving God. There ain't no shame in serving the Lord. There ain't no shame in praising God. I tell you what, we need we need Sister Wood over there on that arm over there. Sister Wood, help her praise the Lord. Help her get loose. Is there another sister that say, man, I've got a burden for Sister Grace right now. I want to worship God with her. Is there a sister? Say, I get over here on this other arm and I'm going to help her. Thank God. Thank God she got on higher ground. Anybody else? Some sister. Some sister. Come over here and help Sister Grace. Hallelujah. Thank God. You know what grace means, Brother Sterrick? Unmerited favor. Y'all couldn't have named her a better name, brother, for the situation she was in. Suddenly the meaning of her name came to fruition. Unmerited favor. Unmerited favor. Unmerited favor. Sounds to me like the deer. They ain't no strength in them legs. They're about that big around. <laughs> I've grabbed them before and said, what? What's up with that? Right? Unmerited favor. <laughs> Woo! Right here, right now, let's worship and praise the Lord. Magnify the Lord. Why don't you thank him for lifting you up and out of that horrible pit? Why don't you thank him for all the great things the Lord has done? It's not only shouting time in heaven. It's shouting time right here at Bethel tonight. It's shouting time at Bethel tonight. It's shouting time at Bethel tonight. <laughs> 